Well, today we're reviewing a mashup of card game and drinking game, Drinking Quest Six Pack. Thank you, Jason Anarchy Games, for sending us a copy of this unique dungeon crawler to check out. The Drinking Quest series of games was designed and written by Jason Anarchy, starting with Drinking Quest way back in 2011. This was followed by five more Drinking Quest games, all of which were self-published by Jason's company, Jason Anarchy Games. Now, Drinking Quest Six Pack combines all six previous games, but features updated artwork, minor rule tweaks, and some awesome extra stuff like rules for boss battles, all in one deluxe box. Now, Drinking Quest has featured artwork from 14 different artists over its various editions, but that's a little more than I have time to list here. So you definitely get a lot in this box, no argument there. If this is the sort of game you're looking for, then the six pack has all the content you'd need for plenty mm -hmm. of play. Now, Drinking Quest is designed for two to four players with optional rules to play with more. I particularly like the designated GM rule for this. Playing through a full adventure can take an hour, possibly even two, depending on how off track you get. But you also have the option to just play through one or two quests at a time instead of doing a full adventure. Now, the MSRP for this deluxe drinking quest set is $59.99 US and can currently be purchased directly from Jason Anarchy Games, but should be showing up in online and physical stores soon. Now, playing time may also be impacted by how much drinking is or isn't going on as well. So Drinking Quest 6 Pack features six different adventures, each split into four separate quests, all represented by cards. You create your character, then draw cards to see what happens to you. Encounters are a mix of one-on-one -on -one combat and challenges to overcome, all of which have a pretty slapstick, ridiculous theme, fitting into the fact that this is a drinking game after all. Now, between encounters, you can spend your gold to upgrade your equipment. Once you get through all the quests, the party teams up to face a boss monster. If at any point you falter on your quest, don't worry, there's no permadeath here. Resurrection can be found at the bottom of your mug after a hearty chug. So to check out the newly improved card layout, new character sheets, and other upgraded components in this deluxe version of Drinking Quest, check out our Drinking Quest six-pack unboxing video on YouTube. Now with this new version of Drinking Quest, you get a nice solid box and a cool comic-themed sleeve. The box lid is held shut by a magnetic flap. Under that, you're going to find a silky two-sided map that serves no purpose other than being kind of cool. Uh, the rules are short and very clear. The box insert works great for organizing everything, and the card quality is good. You also get a pad of character sheets, some dice, and a metal coin. The quality here is impressive, and I have no complaints about it quality-wise at all. Well, now that we have a good idea of what you get in this new deluxe Drinking Quest box set, how about you give us an overview of play? All right, all players select a character and grab the special drink card for that character. Players then fill out a character sheet listing their name, the character's name, the character's maximum hit points, attack dice, defense rating, and the numbers for the character's four saving throws. These saving throws are self-worth, smarts, tolerance, and sexual prowess. The character sheet also has spots to track current hit points, experience, gold, weapons, armor, items, etc. Now, I want to point out here that the special drinks don't have real-world equivalents. You can't mix yourself up a drink based off of your characters, unless you happen to be a creative mixologist yourself. Something I totally think is a missed opportunity that should be added in future games. If I'm going to have uh, two fists with names, I want to be able to actually have a drink named that at the same time. Now, once you've all got characters, you're going to pick an adventure to take part in. Uh, though again, there are six in this box. You're going to take the four quest decks for that adventure, separate them out, and shuffle them. Someone's going to read the description in the back of the book for the first quest, and the game starts. Now, playing the game is dead simple. You flip over one card from the appropriate deck, read it, and act on it. These cards come in two types. There's either monsters or events. Events have flavor text and list a saving throw you have to check. To do this, you roll all the dice and compare them to your saving throw. If you get equal to or under your saving throw, you read the success part of the card. And well, if you fail, you read the fail part of the card. The dice are oddly 1d4, 1d6, and 1dh8. Which, for those math folks out there, the average of the bell curve is 10 and 11 at the top. 
Uh, now the stats are generally above and below the peak of the bell curve. So you're getting 14s and eighth rather than all coming in around 10 and 11. Now, once you draw a monster, you're going to go into a one-on-one -on -one battle to the death where the player on your left will roll for the monster. A D6 is rolled for initiative with ties going to the hero. Then combat just becomes a matter of rolling damage back and forth until someone's dead. There's no two hit. There's no armor class to worry about or anything like that. If a monster wins, your hero's dead. But remember, all you got to do is chug the rest of your drink and you'll come back with full health. No, half health if you can't finish the chug. Now, in order to stop people from getting too wasted, after you've chugged once, for the rest of that quest, you only have to take three sips to resurrect. Now, if you do win the combat, you're going to get gold and XP that's listed on the bottom of the card. That's it. You now know pretty much all there is to know about playing the game. Now, that's pretty much it for mechanics. Now, between each card draw, players have a chance to spend that gold they've earned. They can go to the shop. There's a shop board that lists a bunch of weapons, armor, and special items like beers that restore health, potions to give rerolls, and things like the bracelet of bouncer ability that gives you a boost to all your saving throws. Some items like weapons are class specific, but the armor and healing are universal. Now quests are finished when the deck runs out. After you get to the bottom of the deck, you completed that quest. After you finish the fourth quest in an adventure, you will reach the boss monster. You shuffle up the boss monster deck, and draw a card. Here, everyone has to fight the same monster. Player who deals the killing blow gets to hand out the loot to the other players, and that loot will include some silly booby prizes as well as gold XP and other things. Simple and straightforward. Exactly what you need when there might be inebriation involved. Now, while all this is going on, we come back to those signature drinks. This is a special ability that you can use to break the rules. These include things like the bartendress dancing for tips and thus increasing her gold rewards, or the dwarf heading people, headbutting people in the groin for automatic damage. After the boss is defeated, the player with the most XP wins. Ties are broken by the number of chugs the tied players had to take with the least chugs winning the game. Now that everyone has a good idea of how to play Drinking Quest, it's time to get into our thoughts on this drinking game. So Drinking Quest 6-pack, this new combined set, is my first experience with Drinking Quest. Now, I do remember hearing about this game back on G+, back in like 2010, 2011. I guess the idea of a role-playing game that included drinking sounded interesting, but just wasn't something I was interested in with the group I was playing with. And I never really looked beyond the surface to see exactly what Drinking Quest was about, and I've got to say I was surprised once I did finally get to try this game. Now I know both what it is and what it isn't. So what it is, is a silly experience and a way to add some fun to a night of drinking. Now, what it isn't is a role-playing game in any but the most superficial ways. While Drinking Quest has RPG elements, it's not a role-playing game. Yes, you choose a character, but you don't even take on a role. You don't play that character. It just gives you a bunch of numbers that you need when you draw cards. You don't even get to name your own character. There's no evolving story or branching paths or really any decisions to make. The story is going to be the same every time, and the number of actual choices you get to make in the game is extremely limited. The only real options you get, besides picking a character, is what to spend your money on and when to use that special drink special ability. This is essentially a roll and move that has, thankfully, done away with the board. Now, the gameplay here is pretty much scripted, and some of the players I tried it with found the game to be rather boring because of this as the game boils down to flip a card, read some amusing text, then roll some dice. Rinse and repeat till you finish the adventure. My group found this rather disappointing overall. We were just expecting more from Drinking Quest, especially more RPG elements. Indeed, when you get a nice, meaty box of cards and components, we, perhaps mistakenly, are expecting a bit more game, more choice, or interaction. Now, all of this said, I don't want to totally disparage this game. We did have some fun playing Drinking Quest for what it is, right? A drinking game with some RPG elements. As the alternative to a, you know, silly drinking game, like every time Picard says, make it so, take a drink, I think this is going to be more fun than that particular Star Trek meme. Though I will say most TV show or movie-based drinking games actually have a bit more nuance in the drinking part of the game. Yeah, here you're either pounding or you're taking three sips, and that's it. Now, the theme is good. Uh, the puns are painful, as they should be, and RPG fans are going to appreciate some of the inside jokes. 
Uh, the artwork fits the theme, and the content, while somewhat juvenile, also fits the style of game. Yes, one of the character saving throw stats is sexual prowess, and yes, there are some adult situations to go along with this, and some of which I wouldn't even necessarily call consensual, but I didn't find this to be outright offensive, mostly because this wasn't a role-playing game. It's not like you're taking on the role of these characters. You just got to make sure with your group you know what you're in for when you sit down to play. Now, one thing I will note as for problematic content is that the cards did become more progressive and more diverse with less potentially offensive content with each new edition of the game. For example, in the first adventure, the original Jake and Quest, all of the sexual prowess checks involved women, while that's not the case in the later adventures. The designers appear to have certainly learned and improved, but know that this means Quest 1 may have more potential to offend some players. Now, one of the things I did appreciate that is included in Drinking Quest is talk about drinking responsibility, or sorry, drinking responsibly, and making sure that everyone knows how they're getting home before the game starts. There's a nice good paragraph on this. There are even some variant rules for playing with adult, but without adult beverages, which I do appreciate. You could, of course, sit down and play this game completely sober with a sober group with no plan on drinking. So I think you'd be kind of missing the point entirely. If what you want is a silly dungeon crawl game without the drinking, I think there's better choices out there. Now that we, under now we understand that encouraging drinking, particularly any drinking that may be considered reckless, is very problematic. And there may be legal issues at work in such a game being published. That said, I really wanted more of a drinking game in this. As it stands, you chug when you die and sip, or three sips, if you die again, that quest. You can give someone a chug token that gets traded around and every time whoever receives it has to take a chug, but there's no drinking rules for failing a check or really any of the various other nuanced drinking aspects that I recalled from college drinking game days. If I'm deliberately choosing to play a drinking game, there's a good chance that I'm doing so to drink. And this game really doesn't seem to actually help all that much with that. So looking at Drinking Quest as it stands, there's some improvements I would love to see in future Drinking Quest games, something to just make it more gamified. Uh, one of the things I like about drinking games, some of that nuance Sean's talking about, is I want a game that gets more difficult the more you drink. Uh, that's to me, is the, the key aspect of a drinking game is that it gets harder once you get a little inebriated, which is why I love playing dexterity games when I'm imbibed. But you're not going to find any of that increased difficulty based on your capacity here in this game. Now, I would also, of course, like more decision points in the quests, like having some choices to make would not only increase the, the decision space, but would also increase the replayability and make it feel more like a full role-playing game. As it stands, after playing an adventure with four players, you'll have seen all the cards and you're going to know what to expect every future play. Plus, well, the jokes are funny the first time around, and there was lots of laughing. I have a feeling they're going to get a lot less amusing when you see them over and over and over again. Indeed, once you, uh, <clears throat> once you know the quirks and callbacks, just changing the order they arrive in is of minimal benefit. Yeah. And also, an improvement I would like is honestly to go back to the old character sheets in a way. Uh, the new character sheets look great. They're very visually appealing, but the imagery on them is rather dark and it's hard to see what you've actually written. I would have liked it more if the spots you write on were blank or faded more at least. We actually found in almost every game we played that people were using the back of the character sheets to actually track their damage and hit points instead of the front of the sheet. Indeed, the icons where you're expected to write in pencil make it very difficult to read in anything short of bright daylight. Now as well, I would have greatly appreciated having something to track the amount of damage that's been done to a monster. Having to remember how much health a mob has left every turn isn't always easy, especially when everyone's chatting and socializing. Now, this is one aspect of the game that does get harder the more you drink, but I don't think that's meant to be part of the game. Now, maybe if you added a rule where if you forget your target's health, it goes back to full health and you have to drink, but that's not part of the existing rules. Luckily, with a group, one person can track the monster health for you, but it still has to be done. It still has to be tracked somehow. Now, finally, the other thing I would like is a second set of dice. That just would have been a nice to have. I, I, it's not necessary. I own a lot of dice. It's not a big problem. But I just got annoyed having to pass the dice back and forth during combat, especially when you and the monster have the exact same die to attack. 
I did five. Here you go. I did this. Here you go. Just having two sets, one for that player on your left would have been nice. So overall, I tried four different adventures and drinking quests split over a couple different game nights and a few different groups. And it went over much better with one specific group of players. This honestly isn't a game that's going to appeal to everyone. But for those people it does appeal to, I think they're going to really enjoy it. And I think most of us know uh, who in our own group of friends would dig a game like Drinking Quest. And with that group, it's going to be a ton of fun. Yeah, no, uh, with most, if not all games, the right people can make or break your experience. Now, if you're looking to add a bit of adventure to a night of drinking with friends, I don't think you can go wrong playing around a Drinking Quest as long as everyone's cool with the content and what the game's about. Games of Drinking Quest can lead to a lot of laughs and quite a bit of drinking as well, especially with it being a full-on chug. Potentially, what I figured it out, you could do it like six times a night if you do chug everything and that coin goes in. Plus, there were a couple cards ahead you chug as well, so it, that could be quite heavy. Now, what I don't see is any reason for a group of non-gamers to really want to pick this up. Sorry, not non-gamers, non-drinkers, sorry. I don't really see any reason for a group of non-drinkers would want to pick this up, which makes sense. It's a drinking game. It is primarily a drinking game and a card game secondarily. As for mixed groups, you may be interested in this, uh, especially if you have one. If you have one player who doesn't drink or one, one player of the group who's your designated driver, I think it'd be great because the designated GM rule has that one player playing the monsters and the cards. And that's where you can, might actually get some real role playing in. If you've got someone who has some GM chops, they can actually make it sound a little more interesting than just the text on the cards. And I think it would work great for this. Now, if you're looking for a new role playing game or a new fantasy game to play when you're drinking, I think you're better off taking the drinking resurrection rules from Drinking Quest and porting them over to a high fatality role playing game. Like I can totally say taking the basic concept from this and throwing it into a Dungeon Crawl Classics funnel. I think that could be a great game night. Could also be alcohol poisoning, but you know, that's a... <laughs> well, you, you only start with four to six characters. So again, you're looking at four to six drinks. Well, it depends how many times you resurrect each one, I guess. Um, as for us, I plan to keep this on my shelf. I think it's going to prove popular on the right game nights with the right people. Um, once things return to normal, I plan on having a gaming in the new year party again, and this will be a good one to pull out late in the night when people are kind of borderline after the kids are gone to bed, but before people have got too silly. Well, that's it for our review of the Drinking Quest six pack, a combination of all six previous Drinking Quest games in a new deluxe box set. For a more detailed look at this drinking game, check out the review over at tabletopbellhop.com. <laughs>